anytime you are sent you want to be able to know and gauge the might of the one who sent you and generally speaking as we teach here in life in our world today um, the level of might of the one who sends you whether financial might political might are we together economic might and so on is where you derive your boldness from if the CEO of a bank or the owner of a mall tells me to get into his mall and to shop I step in there with confidence and if the manager or the foreman or someone tries to harass me my confidence is derived from the fact that number one I know the owner of that shopping mall number two I am aware that he's given me access to shop as much as I want is someone learning now so anybody of lesser power, lesser ranking that confronts me, I don't stand conscious of my ability. I stand conscious of the ability of the one who sent me. And sometimes I can look at the manager with every sense of sincerity and say, Mr. Man, if you don't leave this place, you can lose your job for nothing. You don't know who sent me. And you say that with such confidence. They see you dragging all kinds of trolleys in honor to the power of the one who sent you. But if you met a stranger in the mall and he says, look, I have maybe 10,000 Naira and uh, let's share 5,000 5, Naira. There are, there are places in that mall you will not go to. Are we together? Because you are aware that going there uh, is, is a lot of embarrassment. It will cost you. And number two, they may even go and jail you because you will carry a lot of things that you do not have the ability to pay for and the one who supports you does not have the ability to pay for. Let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. There is no request that comes before the throne that causes God to worry. Are we together? There are things that men say you have asked for a hard thing. When Elijah asked Elijah for a double portion, he said, ah! You have asked a hard thing. It is possible, but it is not easy. But the God of heaven has such ability. There is nothing within the imagination of man. Now, you need to listen to a professor of science say, or a philosopher or a psychologist, or all three of them, sit together to discuss to your hearing the level of intelligence. Are we together? And the potentials that are resident within a human mind when it is developed. Everything you see on earth today came as a product of the intelligence, the mental capability of men. From the highest buildings, the most dexterous expressions of, you know, civilization, everything came from the mind of man. And the Bible is telling us that God is able to do God is building someone's faith. So when you are making it look like God, okay, if this is too much, let me reduce it because it looks like you are afraid of my request. He leads you to this sermon and leads you to this scripture. Now unto him. And he says, let's not gloss and trivialize that him. There is something about that him I need you to know. Because when you know it is connected to your giving him glory. That if you are not aware that this him has the power. There is such power that resides with him. It will be difficult for the church to give him glory. So the church birthing glory and bringing glory to the name of the Lord. Is connected to their understanding of the exceeding greatness of his power. Are we together? I have learned from scripture and I have learned from experience that your confidence as you sojourn this spirit life is directly derived not just from your encounter with God but your awareness of how mighty and how powerful he is. I trace my life today to many encounters, not just encounters of God but certain things that I've seen about God from scripture and from visions and experiences that shook away unbelief. I cannot undo it again. There are things I will never be afraid of forever because of the dimension of God's power that I saw. Are we together? Yes. There are things that God does in your life. It becomes sin, unique sin to you to doubt him because you would have seen too much. Let me tell you this. When God wants to build the faith of a man, he exposes you to a level of his power you have never seen. And that dimension 
pounds every unbelief you begin to repent before him that was how he drew peter in john chapter 21 peter had gone fishing he had tried and tried did not catch anything and he simply told him cast your net and when peter caught fish he said no who else can do this he said i'm a sinner don't come close to me you are going to remind me now that you had the same power to save me if you had the power to bring fish out of nothing i would have trusted you so it was it was that miracle was probing his unbelief according to the power we're coming there but it's important for you to know that god is all powerful and you know when, when i speak like this i submit to you sincerely that the church has not really seen certain apostolic dimensions of the power of god our description of power has largely been limited to impartations limited to financial provisions and these things are not wrong but you need to read the bible to really see things that were not parables they were manifestations of the power of this great god sometimes when i read the bible i i wish it were a lie so that i just keep it through but it was true the things that were done before Jesus, the word incarnate arrived and the things that were done through his hand as he walked upon the earth. What manner of man is this that the winds and the waves obey him? You read the Bible, ladies and gentlemen, and see a display of God's power in a very fearful way. I've read my Bible and you want to read it poetically, go to the book of Psalms, my goodness. David did justice to our understanding. He plays with poetry as he paints all kinds of picture, frustrating your unbelief as you read from chapter to chapter. God for you. There is nothing you cannot do. There's no bondage you cannot break. If you have said it, then you will do it. You, you have, have a track record of keeping your word. And you're, you're not, not about to stop doing it now. What's the one thing holding you back from living the life God has called you to? I bet it's fear. Fear that whispers, you're not enough. You can't do it. You'll fail. But what if I told you God never intended for you to live in fear. In fact, he has given you everything you need to overcome it. Today, we're going to talk about how to break free from the chains of fear and walk in the boldness that God has already placed inside of you. And it all starts with one thing, faith. Let's dive in. Fear is something we all face. It can be paralyzing, overwhelming, and even make us doubt God's promises. But here's what we need to understand. Fear is not from God. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7 says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Let that sink in for a moment. Fear is not your identity. Power, love, and a sound mind are. Fear doesn't get the final say in your life. God's power does. I know some of you are watching this right now feeling like fear has gripped every area of your life. Fear of failure, fear of rejection, fear of the unknown. But here's the good news. Jesus is greater than your fear. When you feel anxious or afraid, you're not meant to carry that weight alone. In fact, Jesus invites us in. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Fear can weigh you down. It can make you feel like you're carrying a burden too heavy to bear. But God is saying, come to me, give that fear to me and I'll give you peace. When you put your trust in God, you start to realize that he's bigger than your fears. Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10 reminds us, fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. 
God is literally promising that you don't have to do it alone. He's holding you up even when the fear feels overwhelming. What if, instead of focusing on your fears, you started focusing on God's promises? Practical Steps to Overcome Fear So, how do we practically overcome fear in our daily lives? Here are three key steps. Number one, meditate on God's Word. The Bible is full of promises that combat fear. One of my favorites is Joshua chapter 1, verse 9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous, do not be afraid, do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Read scriptures like this daily, remind yourself of God's truth, and fear will lose its grip on your heart. Number two, pray boldly. Prayer is not just asking God for things, it's an exchange. When you come to God in prayer, give him your fear and receive his peace. Philippians chapter four, verses six to seven tells us, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Number three, take action in faith. Fear tries to freeze you in place, but faith moves you forward. Whatever God is calling you to do, do it despite the fear. That's where real courage comes from. Not the absence of fear, but moving forward, through it with the strength of God by your side. In conclusion, listen, I don't know what fears you're facing right now, but I do know this. God has already given you the power to overcome them. You don't have to live in fear anymore. You can live boldly, confidently, and courageously because God is with you. Remember Romans chapter 8, verse 31. If God is for us, who can be against us? So, don't let fear have the final word in your life. Instead, let faith rise up. Let God's promises lead the way. If this message has touched you, don't keep it to yourself. Share it with someone who needs to hear it. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell for more content that will strengthen your walk with Christ. Let's break free from fear together.